Welcome to the Everything Action Cast, the official podcast of EverythingAction.com. Hello and welcome to the Everything Action Cast, the podcast week of August 7th, 2023. I'm your host, Zach. I'm your co-host, Chris. And uh, we got a bunch of stuff dying this week, so let's jump right in. But unfortunately, like last week, we have to kick things off with some sad news. We lost a bunch of people this week. Uh, William Friedkin passed away, the great director. Um, one of, like I think widely considered like one of the best directors of all time, or like definitely like like that like 70s, 80s, like that new Hollywood era. <laughs> he kind of kicked, helped kick it off and delivered some of the best movies in that era. I would say like The French Connection and The Exorcist. Um, are the two that like are probably definitely jumped to mind for everybody. Yeah, he definitely had a uh, tone that was sort of his presidents in the late 70s and 80s. And it was always like dark and moody. That um, I think like defined a bunch of different er- genres, right? Yeah, I mean, horror, action, thriller. Um, definitely, there's one. It was it was around the right after the Exorcist, but and I, I think it came out the same weekend as Star Wars, or like like around the same time as Star Wars. So it got buried, but it's kind of been rediscovered in recent years, and everyone considers it like a like one of the best movies of the '70s is Sorcerer, which is a, a Roy Scheider. Um, it's a bunch of guys they get they take this job down in South America to deliver dynamite to a, I think I think it's a like an oil like derrick that needs to get like blown up to get closed off. Cause it's like, it's like a danger, but it's, but it's like nitroglycerin. It's like, and it's this like insane dangerous route through the jungle over like the, like suspension bridge and one bump and the dynamite could blow up. Why is it called sorcerer? I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think it's a fantasy it, movie. No, it's, it's, it's a very gritty, like survival thriller like uh yeah these guys going through the going through the jungle and these trucks <laughs> and trying not to blow up do the natives think they're sorcerers is that why i i, I don't know why it's called sorcerer <laughs> it just is and then he also directed uh to live and die in la and blue chips And, and, uh, uh, really, Blue Chips is the basketball one, right? Yeah, that was like Shaq's first big uh, Hollywood acting debut, and then he obviously was in classics like uh, Kazam and Steel. Uh, Steel. Yeah, I thought those movies were fun, but then I didn't know any better. Um, one of his one of his later movies is great is uh, The Hunted, like the Tommy Lee Jones Benicio del Toro movie. Oh, he did that. Yeah, that deserves a rewatch. Yeah, that that's an that's an awesome just yeah. Tyler Jones versus Benicio del sort of like Tyler Jones trains guys to be basically Rambo's, and then one of them goes. It's like it's it's sort of like First Blood, but if like if like uh, Rambo was truly insane, like I mean, murdering people. <laughs> I forgot what was the reason uh, that he. Was like murderous. I think he went on a mission and then just like lost it because they made it. Because Tommy Jones made them so like deadly and so intense, like the training was so intense that like the mission tour just like like went nuts and started like, I'm still on the mission. Every everything's the mission now. I'm gonna kill everyone. <laughs> and it was all about that. Um, they, they did like the Filipino knife fighting, like the Sayakali. <laughs> it was all like CQC knives, and they they like built their own knives. That was like the whole thing of that movie. It's like you got trained to make your own knife. That's like the best knife. Yeah, yeah I did see that. That I mean like they carved they their own knives out of like everything. yeah of whatever steel they find, like carved the knife out of it. <laughs> But 
but yeah, ton, ton, tons of great movies from William Friedkin. Uh, like definitely a talent that will be missed. Uh, uh, directing, uh, he has he has one more movie coming up. It's a kind of courtroom thriller with Kiefer Sutherland called The Kane Mutiny Court Commercial. That is coming out, I think later. It's end of this year, like in like uh, the fall. So that will be the, the final William Friedkin movie. And we also uh, this week lost uh, Mark Margolis, the uh, prolific character actor, probably best known for playing Hector Salamanca on Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. But uh, was also one of those guys that appeared like if you name a show from like, you know, the last 20, 30 years, he was probably a guest star on it at some point. Makes sense. I feel like he was in. At certain at any point during a show's run, if it gets popular enough, he's just on it as like a villain. And then also, you know, also also appear if you go if you throw back to like the like eighties and nineties, he was also in like uh, Hannibal and End of Days and Scarface and Pi and Absolute Power and <laughs> Ace Ventura. Where was he in Ace Ventura? Oh, he was the landlord. Yeah, yes. I forgot that. But yeah, t- tons of roles. I mean, over 162 roles. Um, and... No, nothing coming up. So la- the last thing he was in was the ep- some episodes of Your Honor, which is the Brian Cranston Showtime show. As Henry Salamanca. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think like Hector Salamanca is such a like t- like showcase for like his acting abilities, just because like every there's all in like his facial expressions and like the physical like the physical performance. It is pretty cool that. When you first see him in Breaking Bad, he's just a guy in a wheelchair that can only express himself with finger taps and, like, angry. A bell. Yeah, and a bell, yeah. yeah a bell. And now it's, um, seeing him kind of before that fall is pretty cool. You know, so it feels like a complete circle. Mm-hmm. Unless, for some weird reason, they can't let this franchise go. They're doing a prequel to even that. And it's, like, some other actor playing a young version of him. I hope not. I hope, I hope Better Call Saul is the end. Like that is the end point of the Better Call Saul, like the the Breaking Bad universe. I don't know, man. You don't know the power of money and insane yep. plot holes where there's mm. like time travel and stuff. Give us the version where Walt's fine. <laughs> I guess also, uh, like Heck, uh, Mark McGoss, he's also a, like. Uh, collaborator with Darren Aronofsky a lot, so he's pre- he's in pretty much every Darren Aronofsky movie. Like we're working for a dream and the wrestler and uh, the fountain and. <laughs> you know, I still haven't seen the fountain. I it, it's like this. I know it's an artistic looking movie. I just the plot and then just the story just hasn't drawn me in yet. I don't know. I got do I, I, I have to give it a chance. I think it's like but visually, think, like visually, it's you know visually it's spectacular, but like yeah, it's sort of like this esoteric plot that it's not really about the plot; it's about just about the the vibes and the visuals. I forgot what con we were at, and they were just playing it like in the background, and I caught like <laughs> one or two parts. Yeah, yeah, is it we're either at a con together or at a bar together? But the fountain was on, and I was just catching glimmers of it. And I was like, "This is what the fountain's about." What a yeah, what a weird choice. <laughs> And then um, also this week, we lost uh, Johnny Hardwick, who was the voice of Dale on King of the Hill. Yeah, great character actor. A oh, great character. And um, yeah, it's did you see the later? Well, it's, it's interesting because, like, King of the Hill is pretty much like, it's kind of the only thing that he's really done. Like, he was... Uh, 
he was he was in a couple like music videos, but as far as like acting, yeah, no, Dale was his, 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 his was his one thing, and then he's also a producer and a writer on King of the Hill as well. Mm. Well, I was say like because he was a comedian before he got King of the Hill, and then essentially he just adapted that character mannerism as mm-hmm. his own, and then he sort of uh, he did like unofficial Dale stuff on his YouTube channel. What's well, interesting because he he also appeared in there was some sort of kart racing game that was like a Fox animation kart racing game and he did the voice for Dale in that game. Hey. And I he was working on the King of the Hill revival that's going to be on Hulu, but apparently he did not finish his uh vo- like the, the voice acting uh role for that so. They're, they're gonna have to get like a sound alike, or I don't know what they're gonna do with the King of the Hill revival, but that's that's a huge blow to that <laughs> that show. But uh, yeah, so R- R.I.P. to all three of those guys. Um, you know, huge huge losses in the world of like character acting, voice acting, directing. But moving on, um, we got a new trailer this week for The Continental, which is the Peacock John Wick prequel series that's going to follow a young Winston in the 70s as he enters the world of the assassins of John Wick. And definitely the main thing for this new trailer is that it reveals kind of what the setup of the show is, is that Winston's brother, Frankie, steals something from The Continental and then... uh, the Continental's current in the 70s concierge, Cormac, who's played by Mel Gibson, uh, wants, wants to get it back, or, uh, you know, he wants, or else his brother's going to get, like, taken out by the, like, like the, <laughs> the high table. But then Winston's, it seems like Winston is, like, getting a bunch of people who are associated with the high table to, like, go up against the Continental. So he's he's fighting them to start with, but then he's gonna end, somehow end up being the guy who runs the Continental in New York. <laughs> by the end, it's of this probably some agreement. I'm, I'm guessing it like his plan sort of goes right and then sort of goes wrong, but then it's like okay, well, he's supposed to be clever, and I also feel like he's gonna betray his group. Yeah. To say like, oh, okay, the safer option is for me to be the now head of the Continental. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess he kills Mel Gibson, and then it's like, oh, you. You have to take his place now. I don't think that's how that works. I feel like the high table would be like, we're just going to kill you and disappoint another manager. Yeah. But it's got to be or, something else. Some other or it's like, yeah, yeah, he impresses the high table with like, oh, you got, you, re- you managed to get all these people together to fight us, but <laughs> let's put those skills to use for us. Or, or it's like, or, 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 I, or, I feel or, like or, you're or, giving two credit. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be something more sinister, like how he portrayed John, and we thought it was some sequ- some big plan, but yeah. no, I don't think it's a big plan. I think it was seriously just like he panicked and was like, oh, this is the better option. Or or it's probably like his brother gets captured or is about to get killed. It's, it's like either like join us or, or kill your brother. Like that, because that's, that's what um, Donnie Yen's deal was. Is that's why he was like always still under the high table, was because they, like, they had his daughter hostage, basically. True. I also feel like it's uh, it's not quite like I, I don't know. He never mentions his brother in the series. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, huh? Attacked on. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's Frankie's making it through <laughs> these three episodes. But I mean, action-wise, it looks pretty awesome. It looks it's, it's got like all the crazy. John Wick characters and assassins in action you would expect, hopefully. And it's going to be three episodes. Each episode is going to be basically 90 minutes or more, so basically three movies as a, a limited series. And it's going to start September 22nd on Peacock, and then each week after that for three episodes. So definitely excited to check that out. Hopefully it lives up to <laughs> the John Wick universe. And then we also got the trailer for season, I think, 14 of Archer, the final season of Archer. 
I know, I can't believe it's here. Yeah, it's fi- after after all these years, it's finally wrapping up. It's the one last job or one, one last series of missions for the agency, as they're known now. And see, like the big thing this season is that Lana is, is is running the agency, and is trying to like get jobs that make them money, but also like help, try to help the world. But then obviously that's that's really hard to do when like you have like Archer and all the other people, <laughs> Pam and Cheryl and everyone are just like trying to like do, do whatever they want. And they also have a new they have a new agent, uh, Zara Khan, played by Natalie Dew, who's joined the agency, and she's like a new like hotshot agent that is like rivals with Archer. But uh, yeah, it, it looks it looks like you know typical Archer wackiness going on. Definitely, definitely, it, it's just to see how they're gonna like wrap everything up and like see how the show is gonna end. <laughs> yeah, I I wonder um like Mallory isn't there anymore, right? They Jessica uh Wet, Weathers is gone. Yeah, but, I think it was it was either la- it was two seasons ago. Um, because yeah, when Jessica Walters passed away, Walters, that's it. Basically, Mallory kind of like left and uh, like left the agency to like the crew, and it was like, hey, I, I'm done. Like, you get you guys run it now. I'm gonna like I'm re- I'm retired. <laughs> and then her like Mallory is actually like living on a beach with like her uh I can't remember his name, but there's like like this like her one one of her like uh boyfriends that <laughs> like you know, they use like a Owns like a car, like a car dealership or something, or he's like a big like, like a auto salesman or something. And then they were together for like on, on and off on the show, but then they ended up on like the speech together. So yeah, so in in the universe of show, Mallory is like is like you know just hanging on a beach, retired, not not, not dealing with anything anymore. But yeah, the final season is going to kick off uh, August thirtieth on fx and then fx and hulu the next day have you been if you keep keeping up chris or are you like way behind or i'm way behind way way behind have you, have you gotten through like even like the like the uh coma seasons nope <laughs> i just didn't bother because i was like ah, i'll get into it later and then i just let like time pass mm-hmm. a lot of time pass if you if you can't tell by now I mean, I mean, yeah, 13, 14 years in it. I mean, it's still, it's still good. I mean, it's still like super clever writing, and the cast is amazing. So <laughs> it hasn't really, you know, it hasn't really dipped. I mean, some people didn't like some of like the coma seasons because they were like exploring different genres. Like it was one was like a Star Trek show like season, and then one was like a pulpy like adventure season, which some people wanted to be back to more of like. No classic like spy archer, but I thought I thought all those seasons were pretty fun because it was it's like it was a a fresh spin and everything and like all like, these characters in, like different settings and getting to do like different things like archer noir and and then they had like the archer vice season which is great like where they were all just like trying to <laughs> became like cocaine dealers for a season. So yeah, it's 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 been a wild ride for Archer, and it's uh, but it's coming to an end. So uh, moving on, last bit of news for this week is we found out there's going to be a Bruce Lee anime series. Uh, it's in development. Shan Lee, uh, Bruce Lee's daughter, is uh, developing the show along with Shibuya, which is a some sort of website or streaming service, or like they 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 put out anime they put out like anime series, so they're uh, ones that are gonna have this Bruce Lee series, and it's gonna be called House of Lee. It's gonna come out next year, and it's gonna be Bruce Lee, like a fictional version of Bruce Lee, assembling a team called the Dragon Warriors to uh fight demons and fight like this evil force that's like taking over the world. Mm-hmm. It's weird to see like fictional actors and characters come back. I mean, it's nice to have his the blessing, but I'd rather have more episode seasons of the Warriors, like you know mm-hmm. the uh, 
things that things are like no inspired inspired by him and not directly like here's, here's yeah, Bruce yeah. Lee, like anime Bruce Lee. <laughs> if I'm thinking it's the same problem with that Elvis show where people were just like wishing it was just something else. Mm-hmm. Then I, I haven't heard like I've heard basically the like Elvis show was okay or not. You know, it's it's it just was like it's a thing. We haven't talked about that Elvis show. I think me and you have not seen it. I I, I have not seen it yet, so. But I guess this um, Shibuya site, I guess, I don't, cause I don't think it's a streaming service. I think it's just, I think you just go to their site and then they have just shows. The <laughs> they, they, have, they have, their main show is called White Rabbit. And I guess, I guess like that's what like Shanley saw White Rabbit and was like, oh yeah, these guys can do like a, 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 a crazy anime show about my dad. I guess so. <laughs> so like, so like, I, I guess you just you sign up. I don't know if there's like a. It doesn't look like there's a fee or something, but it's kind of a weird, definitely a weird, uh, like place to put like a big like Bruce Lee. <laughs> show you think it'd be like no, crunchy Bruce, roll Bruce or something not, yeah Bruce Lee hasn't fallen out of public view where we don't know who he is anymore and they just kind of made a random show because it's like easy licensing I imagine the licensing for Bruce Lee wasn't cheap you know it wasn't something um I don't know like it, it still cost money you know <laughs> and like it ended up on Shibuya like it's probably popular in some other country. Just never heard of it in America. I don't know. Maybe we're just out of the loop. Yeah. But yeah, you think it'd be on, on like a Crunchyroll or something. Or yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. But yeah, it's going to be next year on this Shibuya site. And there's going to be a excuse me a trailer in front of the 50th anniversary of enter the dragon there's going to be special showings this coming sunday and also next wednesday are, are going to have you can watch a 4k you know the 4k version of enter the dragon in theaters and you can check out this they're gonna have like the full trailer for this house uh house of lee show in front of that and hopefully we'll see that we'll get the full trailer online uh soon after that or time soon because they they just put like a teaser trailer it's like seems like it's very like unfinished it's like sketches and like unfinished footage so but yeah i guess we'll we'll have to keep an eye on that and then see what see what it is maybe we'll have to sign up for this (laughs) whatever the shibuya Shibuya. had to to figure out how you sign up for shibuya when this comes out and check it out And that's it for news this week. So let's jump into show and tell. And Chris, speaking of you know martial arts and uh, ninjas, <laughs> um, I think you and I both watched New York Ninja to get ready yes, for get ready for Husky Made. Which, if you're hearing this, we are probably on our way to see it, or we've already seen Husky Made live talking about New York Ninja. In fact, we're there. Yeah, probably. Right <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the shit because we're going to the, the uh, New Jersey. Uh, live Husky Made show, and that that New York Ninja is the movie for that show. So we had to do our homework and check that out. And man, I so I I had seen the Red Letter Media. They did like a best of the worst spotlight on it, but that still that still does not prepare it, you for like the, the entire movie. <laughs> it does not cover a lot, right? You are just blown away. But like I said, I think I mentioned this when I I talked about it last week. Um, they lack a lot of like extra scenes to explain things and what they cobbled together still wasn't good like it's like coherent it's not a coherent plot and it's upsetting because it's like if they had a little bit more money in the budget to add things it might have been good but for they i mean again it, it, it like messed with my brain because what they did was amazing for how hard it was to get there right Mm-hmm. But you wish there was a little bit more, so your brain doesn't just rot. So, so basically, if, if you don't know, New York Ninja it originally got shot in 1984. This guy John Liu shot it. He was like directed and starred in it, 
And then for whatever reason, the footage was abandoned. It was there was like six to eight hours of footage that just got left on a shelf with no audio, no scripts, no storyboards, nothing. And then Vinegar Syndrome, who's you know distributed, they've put out a ton of like cult and weird movies on Blu-ray. I think they did like a Miami Connection and some other movies like that. They found the like raw New York Ninja footage and then had uh, this director Kurt Curtis M. Spieler come in and try to figure out <laughs> a movie, like a try to get this footage into like something that resembles a movie. And then they had to dub in all the audio and all. So like new music, they had to get a bunch of people like they got like Don the Dragon Wilson and Cynthia Rothrock and Linnea Quigley to like dub over the footage because they had no, like this footage they had had no audio whatsoever. So it's, it's a, it's a crazy mess of a movie that they got like, it is like, so Vinegar, Vinegar Syndrome just had to basically figure out like how, like what we have to like make this into like something that like is like kind of coherent and they st- <laughs> kind of, but then still not. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It, it It's crazy. It's crazy. that Like this, this is like the most coherent they footage they could get out of like eight hours of raw footage that's another thing right that that is a bonkers problem where essentially they have all this footage a good amount of it they couldn't use and then they just cut it down to an hour and third barely a feature length movie yeah but yet but yet yet, like but they had to guess what guess about the plot because they had no guidance whatsoever as far like no script it's basically you, you got handed like eight hours of nonsense and you've you like turn this into a movie <laughs> you have no you have no script no footage you, you, no audio no storyboards you have you have no idea like where this came from you just have to like you just have to, like turn it into something like as recognizable as yeah But yeah, it is. I mean, it, it's it's so it's so crazy. Like just all these different scenes of just like the ninja fighting random gangs who are seem like they're supposed to be like the warriors, sort of, because they have some of them are like sort of like coordinated with like masks or uh, tape on their face or something. It's like, it seems like they're supposed to be like different gangs that are like these like coordinated gangs, but then. Who they work for? They work for the plutonium killer. So all the gangs work for the killer, or just the one gang works for the killer? Yeah, the, the plutonium killer who powers up by opening a briefcase full of plutonium, then that like burns him, but also gives him powers. But he also can burn people with the plutonium because yes. he kills one woman i guess he kills her well i don't think he, he doesn't kill her with like his burning powers he, he strangles, strangles her, her. yeah right. but he does okay. he does he does put her his he puts his hands on her back and then her back is burning because he has like he's he's radioactive And then he uses like he, but his main weapon is darts. Like he has like poison darts or. Oh, I forgot about that dart. It's like one scene. Well, that's like that's like his main weapon for like the whole movie is that he is like, just like, right around his limousine and just like shooting people out the window with his uh, <laughs> dart. Well, that gun. happens in one scene, Zach. Just one scene. Right, the cameraman. Yeah, that's it. And then we mm-hmm. never see that dart thing again. I feel like he like. Like pulls it out a couple times. Um, Who does he, he use it against? I don't know if he uses it, but he just, just kind of like is like, I have this dark gun. <laughs> like, no, that's just one scene. Doesn't doesn't he use it when like the guy when he goes he drives himself to like that meeting with the with the one gang and then he fights them for some reason, but then then they're like, oh, go find me more women or something. <laughs> No, he shows up as the fake uh, driver. Yeah, he... And then he has a gun. <laughs> and then the ninja shows up and ruins yeah. that. And then, like, the gang, the other gang can't <laughs> figure out if they should kill the boss or fight the ninja. Is that the scene where they throw, like, the tennis net on the ninja? 
Yeah. <laughs> and then he does like a crazy like reverse like he does like a reverse jump like like Above, 50 feet in the uh, air. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the same scene, Zach. Like that's yeah. not like another part. And then that's that's like at the like third act. And they cram as much as they can on that last part. Like that's how it starts in the third act. Yeah. Is like the gang going, "Hey, we're getting sick of listening to the Batonium Killer. We want to know who you look like for some reason." And then they were gonna like kill him to be in charge of the gangs. Mm-hmm. But then we still can't figure out where they're storing these like people in that warehouse by the ocean or like by the sea. Yeah. So or- the Plutonium Killer is a serial killer, but he also is like a human trafficker because he's abducting women and locking them in a lair. And then he's like selling murdering one or two. of them. Yeah. And he's selling them to a British guy called the pale man. But the pale man is actually an Interpol agent who is, wants to take down the plutonium killer and also rescue the women. But his plan is to just let them, t- let the women be tortured and like, like held in this dank dungeon for like, God knows how long until he gets enough women to rescue. <laughs> like he's not doing anything. Like he's he's just coming back to like the plutonium camera, be like, I need more women. Give me more women. <laughs> and so like more and more women are being like uh, like t- kidnapped, locked, like tortured, locked away in this dungeon. And then at some point the pale man will, will help them or like finally start like arresting them. <laughs> Maybe, but this is after Interpol has been like keeping tabs yeah, that's, on yeah, the, the plutonium killer yeah the pale man is an interpol agent he's like i, I work for interpol and, like because at one point he finally tells uh like the, the like the detective and the ninja like hey or, or so he tells someone like hey i work for interpol <laughs> like, I, I, I know what they stop I know some of these murders yeah and then the ninja's friend, Randy, Randy Rydell, who's a reporter, and then the detective, like, Detective Jimmy, like, his partner gets kidnapped. Who, I love, the partner's just always wearing an, like, I love New York Ninja shirt, like, shirt the entire time. The partner. She, the, what, like, the, the, the woman who, like, has, like, she's wearing, like, a New York, I love New York Ninja shirt, and then she does, like, the, when they're in, like, the lair at the end, she does, like, oh, a little wait, bit of karate. She's the reporter? No, there, there, there's two separate characters. There's like the reporter, and there's like there's a the detective's partner who wears like is wearing like a, oh, like a, so like a yeah, red skirt, and then she has like a, I love who, New York Ninja who, shirt. Yeah, so but she's supposed to be dressed up as a ninja fan. Yes, that was like the sting operation. Yeah, and but that's it, that's that's who Cynthia Rothrock voices is the yeah, partner. Yeah. You know what's crazy? It's like at certain scenes you can't tell the difference between the reporter and then the detective. They look yep. almost alike. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And also, also the the ninja's like murdered wife is also like kind of looks the same as both of them too. <laughs> they all have like kind of they're like all kind of similar looking. <laughs> yes, and it's confusing because when we're trying to figure out like, oh, did something tragic happen or like, who, like how does the reporter know kung fu now? We're like, what? <laughs> well, I do love that like the the partner, the, like uh, the police partner, like. Her one, she has a like a fight, but she's doing like it's it's it, it, she's fighting by Cynthia Rothrock, but she's doing like very like karate one oh one moves of like that's my purse, ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is like self defense training fighting mm-hmm. against I don't know like kindergarten trained gangsters because I, I was I am dumbfound that these uh these guys were able to corral all these women. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I enjoyed it. Will I want to watch it like more again? No. Like I watched oh, it with my fiance and was like, it was a lot for her to take in. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth watching once if you, especially if you love you know like Miami Connection or like Dangerous Men that kind of movie. This one, this one definitely felt more like Dangerous Men to me, where it's just like yes, yes. It's just like absolute nonsense of like how did someone make this or why why did someone make this I or like. Make this. But that's the problem. So when you ask yourself, like, this wasn't intentional. Whoever made this originally was like, I can't honestly finish this movie. Like, I'm just going to dump the film somewhere. And, like, good for them. Because, holy shit, I couldn't imagine that version of the cut, right? Mm -hmm. Then you get Vinegar Syndrome, who was just like, great, let's make a movie with this. We paid a dollar for this film. 
uh, let's just compile the best of footage mm-hmm. and see what we get. But it's like the effort it made still wasn't good. It, it's like a great movie to watch to appreciate an uh, editing technique, right? Like to see how good they <laughs> edit it. But it's not good in a way that's like entertaining. Because at least Miami Connection, it's got a good like original soundtrack that the movie made. Yeah. And then it's got like a hilarious like filming production problem and ego like acting. Because this movie's also an ego project too. The main ninja guy, the main character, is also like the co-producer of this. So and, and the original director and yeah, the star. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's like it's a classic like classic written, directed, starring produced by this one guy so it's like a vanity project that obviously like i get it right Mm -hmm. problem is is that like he was like i can't release this movie he at some point knew like i sank too much money i need to stop and let's not talk about this well i think they ran out of money and then because and then there's like there's an interview with like the original like special effects artist who had like a hundred dollar budget and then like yeah, they had. He's like we had no, we had literally no money, and then <laughs> we ran out of the money so, we had. But like Vinegar Syndrome did, like it hired the like a, a good synth band. It it got like a fun cast to do this for like an afternoon to like record lines. You know, I get that vibe. Yeah. But like if you're trying to watch it like a full movie without knowing the history about it, mm-hmm. different experience. I like at the end of the movie, it like apologizes and says like, hey, like we did the best we can to credit who we think these people are. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that part? Mm-hmm. So like I say, like it's a great, it, this movie is like definitely a movie watchers movie. You have to be a fan of like bad movies. You have to be a fan of that decade. You have to be a fan of, of like gorilla movie making. And, and like, I guess a meta movie because if you don't know the history and you just threw this movie on, you're just like, this is terrible. But it's like, yeah, it's intentionally terrible. Yeah. But well, it's like also I've... not their fault. Like, you know, it's like, it's just what they think this, this is what's going to happen. I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely lots of great, just like random moments throughout the whole thing. Like, like the, uh, the roller skate fight where they, like, they just has roller, roller skate for one scene and he never uses them again. That was filmed very illegally. If you see <laughs> yeah. backgrounds and just yeah. mm-hmm. like the people, that was like okay, let's just film before we get stopped or someone asks us like what we're doing. And there's and just like little things like I love when they fight. So they find that woman's body that got, that got murdered by the plutonium killer, and she's in like a garbage can. And then they're like, get, we gotta get, well, we gotta get this body to the morgue. And then the cops just like lift it up, the garbage can up, and just move it like a couple feet and then leave. Everyone just like yes. walks away. <laughs> I feel like that should have been an edit and they didn't know what to do. So the actors yeah. sort of improvised and then they just left it in for the film reel, but they never filmed a follow up or anything. Cause we just assumed yeah. that woman's still there <laughs> yep. for the rest of the movie, this dead body in this trash can, like no one came to collect. And I also, and then also in the beginning too, like when, um, the ninja's wife gets murdered and then she kind of like, fl- just like kind of flops down the railing, <laughs> like very slowly. <laughs> Where, because I think she got, I, did she get she got shot? shot once, and, and then she got she, shot like in the shoulder. Then she got yeah. shot again. Because yeah, because she, she, she got shot in the shoulder. I'm like, she's dying. She got shot in the shoulder, and she's like, but then she like rolls down the st- like the, the subway stairs, and then the guy Switchblade comes in, or like no, Freddy Cufflinks is the guy <laughs> that comes in and stabs her. Freddy Cufflinks. Yep, that's the character's name that oh, they the figure the is, gave him. I, I didn't, I did not know anyone's name. That was another part. Like I either they said it one time, and then that was it. And no one repeats names again. Well, they, you learn everyone's name and during the credits, but then you get, you get to see like who voiced them. And then they, because I think I think Figure Sister came up with all these like random names, except for they knew they knew John Liu, and then they knew Nita because there's Liu well, say like I love you, Nita, after she's murdered. <laughs> and then just like John is like on the roof, just like and like at like the, the world's saddest birthday party. Okay, I I did understand that birthday party because i couldn't figure out like i think john Lu's chinese so it's like oh hey like did did his wife not understand who he is either and we're just like yeah you're japanese here's like ninja gear and a, and a <laughs> katana like i was i was confused by that but 
it was to surprise him that she's pregnant too, and then it was like, here are some swords to bring to the house. Well, I think it was I think it was her birthday party, or was it his birthday party? It was his birthday party. It's it his, it his birthday. And that's why he smacked. That's why she gave a photo of herself to him. Yeah. And but then, then the blue, but then the blue, but then the balloons all, but then the balloons all say, "I love Nita, I love you, Nita," or something. <laughs> Maybe he bought the balloons. Yeah. We still don't know. Like <laughs> he doesn't see the body. It just, it just sort of happens like that same day. Because right? that, that, that opening is that open that first scene is like very Tommy Wiseau at the room, which is like, "Hey, by the way, I'm pregnant." Really? Okay. I'll see you later. Bye. 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 <laughs> and then she gets instantly like murdered. Wait, wait, wait. Is the kid that it's the same kid? The kid that he like adopts as a oh my, Yes. It's the same kid that gets accosted by like the people, like the like village people gang. That was such a weird thing too. Just like the whole middle movie is, is well, you're my you're my son now. We're gonna go fishing. I'm gonna like I'm gonna fish in. New York Harbor spearfish, <laughs> you know? like, and then yeah. it's like he fishes in like a, a man thong. I'm like, oh yeah. my god! If you were just in the '80s and just like drove a car past this, and you're like, I need to call the cops. And they also they both got shot, and then he, they don't go to the hospital. He just like uses ninja magic to heal them both, apparently, or something. That's right. Like he gets shot because he's doing a dumbass backflip. And then yep. the kid gets shot for protecting, protecting the, ninja. the ninja. And then the kid, then the kid forms a child soldier army of I Love Ninja fans that okay. go around beating up I, the gangs. My insane theory is that in the several weeks that we fast forwards, he's been saving all these kids, so that's why they're huge fans of him. Yes, because there's a it says, it says several weeks later after Halloween, <laughs> like it's Halloween, the police killer kills that woman, and then it's like several weeks later, and then it's like. So the New York Ninja has been going around recruiting children. Because these kids are willing to, like, die for the Ninja. And, and making merchandise. Yeah. It, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. But we can talk more about this, but we'll definitely do a follow-up later after how this get made. I don't yeah. know. I'm, I'm saving good questions for them. I've got, like, one or two cocked and ready, just in case I get I get somehow get down there to talk on the mic. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, did you check anything else besides uh, New York Ninja, Chris? Uh, I saw 65. Okay. So I finally saw that. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't mind it. I, I enjoyed it. I, it was better than I thought it would be. No, it, yeah, it's, I, it's, it's, it's perfect. I kind of wish it stuck to one thing instead of trying to be, like, two things at once or three things at once. Yeah, it's it's a perfectly fine... You know, sci-fi movie. You get what you, you kind of get what you pay for. If you want to see M Driver for dinosaurs, you see M Driver for dinosaurs. Like, did you get the vibe that it wanted to be like family friendly at times, especially with the um the teen when he meets like the other girl, like the the I guess the non whatever language he speaks, space language. and She's from a different part of the planet they're both from that, that is not Earth and not the future Earth. They're from a different planet altogether. Yeah, I, I actually kind of prefer this movie wasn't on Earth, and it was just straight up, these people are on a Earth-like planet, and they have to survive it. Because my thing is, these people, as soon as they get rescued, are going to turn around and be like, fuck this planet, never go there, it sucks. Mm-hmm. And that's why we never meet these aliens for millions of years. Well, conveniently, all their technology got destroyed because they landed there like three days before the asteroid hit that destroyed because the dinosaurs go extinct. So, right, right. But like I, said, I kind of prefer if they, in my head, like if they just didn't call this Earth mm -hmm. and then they leave it alone. As a alien planet, like it's a very high concept. It's also very disconnected, but there's enough about the movie that you can just assume this is the future and be fine with it. But the well, fact that they are on Earth before the big, like I didn't think of the big, the Big Bang was, or not the Big Bang, the asteroid, the the mega killer, the Armageddon one was gonna mm -hmm. be there. And also, the dinosaurs are very 
odd looking compared to like other dinosaur movies or other like you know walking with dinosaurs or something like that so you could you could definitely sell them as like alien alien dinosaurs <laughs> like my, my my also theory is this is uh because of that will smith movie after earth or oh god yeah yeah it's like let's not go that route because essentially this is the same movie Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Except with the fear thing, and that the um, there's actually a better chemistry going on. <laughs> yeah. Also, I had this uh sad idea that at the end, like Adam Driver was gonna die. Like he just sort of passes away. He's happy. Yeah. He also, does nothing about his wife at all. Oh yeah, no, it's it's all about his daughter. I, I I thought maybe they'll have more family moments, but no. Like that wife character is in that one scene, and then you see her hands in one other scene, and that's it. And I guess his daughter passed away before he left on the mission, or during. Like he was getting transmissions during the flight, and because it was going to be like a, however it was going to be like three years, or whatever it was going to be, or how many, however many years it was going to be, he was going to be away. But then she had space cancer, whatever whatever her disease was, and then she like died while he was away. Whatever company I was working for that was promising treatment, but were they withholding the treatment until he completed the journey? Because he was he was taking the job to earn, so they had enough money to get her treatment. So, but then she must have got worse, and they couldn't the, it, because he was gone. They couldn't afford the treatment. Yeah, that just shows me this movie is about like terrible space healthcare. It's just it's universally terrible all all sides. Because even in space, whatever mystery disease she got, the, they're like, well, no, we, you can be fixed with like money. Yeah, this this future futuristic society that like existed millions of years before Earth, <laughs> but, like humanity sprang up, still cannot give people healthcare. Like, or, like health insurance. Healthcare. Yeah. So I was like, wait a minute. Uh, but I didn't mind it. I thought the story was fine. I thought the Adam Driver was pretty fun to watch. Um, I think if I wanted to really have like Adam Driver day of back-to-back family dad kind of thing, I'd watch that other movie where he plays the neurotic dad and on that Netflix movie. Oh, yeah. What, what is that one? It's... Uh, like, it came, it came out, like, end, end of last year? Yeah, it was, like, predicting that train explosion movie. Like, the, the actual train explosion thing that happened in real life. White noise. White noise. I was going to say House of Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, white noise. I, I feel like Netflix was, like, sort of, like, huh? What do you want to see? Huh? This next? But yeah, I definitely want to see White Noise at, at some point. So, uh, anything else, Chris? Uh, that's about it. I think I'll save a few to talk about next time. I still got to finish Fubar, and I still mm-hmm. got to watch Secret Invasion, but I'm more into oh Fubar God, than Secret Invasion. You're gonna, you're gonna you're gonna subject yourself to that, the whole thing, Chris. I have to. I'm only like one episode in, and then I was like, I don't know about this, and then I need to just watch it just so I can catch up in case Loki does a reference or some bullshit. What about you? What have you been watching? So, I saw something that was similar to New York Ninja. Um, I saw Grizzly 2 The Revenge, which is i think it's on showtime same as uh new york ninjas that are really showtime is really div- getting, digging into like the delayed for decades t- terrible movie <laughs> uh catalog but yeah this is a sequel to grizzly that we watched for a uh every day commentary a little, couple, like a couple months ago um from 1976 this is this, this was originally filmed in 1983 and then was not released until 2020 and, but I, th- I think unlike Nerd Ninja, it was actually it was finished. It just was not released. It just for whatever reason didn't get put out. Um, <clears throat> and then a, a gra- like Gravitas Ventures got it, and then they fit they actually they edited in some like stock footage and some like modern footage into it, 
which is very jarring and like very clearly not <laughs> foot like when they cut to like like you know like 2020 stock footage it's like so jarring compared to like the 80s footage and but yeah but basically basically the premise is that it's a new it's a different it's Yellowstone National Park there it's a it's a new bear um her cubs got killed by hunters now she's on a revenge mission and there's there's a new ranger it none, none of the characters from grizzly show up it's, it's like a totally separate it's just in name only sequel to grizzly and it's, it, it's it, it, but also like a giant bear movie again like, um, there's another bear expert show up and does nothing so that's probably the best the best part of this movie is that john reese davies shows up as a like french french canadian bear hunter named carl bouchard and so and he, talk, he talks to like, the third person it's like Bouchard's oh, no. seen a lot of bears. Like, wait, when did this movie come out? 1983. Oh, well, that's, when, so that's, like when, that's when it was shot. Too. That's when it was shot, and then it came out in 2020. Finally, the the only other, only other interesting thing about this movie is that um, the first five minutes features very very young, very very unknown George Clooney, Charlie Sheen, and Laura Dern. What? So they are. They're like these like like kids going to because the, the the whole premise of the movie is that there's a gonna be a giant rock concert in the Yellowstone, and but then this bear starts running around and so like the the chief ranger's like we gotta cancel the concert and then there's a the woman who like apparently owns the park, <laughs> she owns Yellowstone or something. Um, it's like no we, we're not gonna cancel this concert it's gonna make us a ton of money. So they're trying to like stop this bear for like like because like thousands of people thousands of kids are coming to this rock concert. And there's a, like a giant grizzly bear running around. But basically, but basically uh, Charlie Sheen, George Clooney, Lord Dern are kids going to this concert, and then in the first five minutes, they all get murdered by the bear. <laughs> but that it was the, weird to think of young Charlie Sheen, but it's weird, weird to also think that Lord Dern and Charlie Sheen are the same age then. Mm-hmm. And George Clooney. Huh. So yeah, that was that was like the big selling point of the re- like when it finally got released in 2020 it was like, look, this is a movie with Charlie Sheen, George Clooney, and Laura Dern. They're the stars. Then it's like, no, they're not the stars. <laughs> they're they're just on the poster. Yeah, like, that's mm-hmm. that's the it's more accurate. Switched, yeah. But yeah, it's 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 so much it's way it's so much worse than the first Grizzly. Like the, oh, no. there's barely there's barely any bear t- attack stuff. It's there's a lot of like bear cam, but not a lot of bear kills. Like there's like there's, so there's like no fun like bloody kills at all. Um, the whole like the whole like last act of the movie is just like basically just a concert. Like you're just watching like terrible like Euro Euro rock concert like, 80s concert stuff. Oh. <laughs> it's like look. Because at that they're just they're just filming the rodeo, like right? They're just kind of killing yeah. time. It's. Like I don't I don't know if I, th- I think it might have been there might have been this, this like festival or something might have been going on at the, like at the same time or something and they're like oh man we can like we can film this movie while they're doing this rock festival in Hungary <laughs> but then the funny thing is too is they they apparently they thought they didn't have enough footage so they sub in like what's clearly like a like a band from like 2020 like a, a current band. They just play like a, like a YouTube video of them, it, like it, where it's like they're supposed to be on stage at this '80s rock festival, but then it's like the footage is them in like a room, <laughs> like like a, a modern. It's like this modern band in a modern room. And it's just like this is not how how did you think how how did you think this would work? <laughs> See what I mean? Like they they did the the thing I mentioned of just okay, we just have a bad movie. We need to film the blanks, but instead of yeah. making the story make sense, they just shot more it like, is... extended footage. It is sloppy. Like it is so sloppy the way they put like just shove like drone footage in or like nature footage or stock <laughs> like, footage. It, does the footage change quality where there's just like an HD? Uh, one thousand percent. Like it's like you have like eighties. Like you can clearly tell it was shot in the eighties, and they'll cut to like, like, like crystal, no, uh, crystal clear, uh, like, like crystal clear HD, like tw- twenty twenty footage of like a band or like people walking around, and it's like wow, they couldn't even bother filtering it. You know, at least there's... you can. It costs money to filter to look like VHS, but you can essentially just keep, like, film the VHS, like, film the HD footage with a VHS camcorder, and you get the quality. Like, you know, you could fake it. Yeah. I mean, there's stuff like there, like, if you're looking at the con, like, the the crowd at the concert, it's this 80s, like, super 80s, like, German 
like you tell like you t- and then you know it's like an 80s rock crowd and then so in like the same scene there'll be like a, a crowd shot of the 80s 80s kids at the concert but then, then like a one shot will be clearly like like stock footage from like some sort of like whatever tw- like tw- like you know <laughs> film editing software they had of like gen z millennials <laughs> that are just like dressed not dressed like the 80s at all and clearly not in the 80s <laughs> and it, it, it just totally like incongruous <laughs> does not does not match anything it it's so terribly done the, the whole movie is just is just terrible <laughs> it's 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 definitely a, it's a waste of time that's unfortunate i would say maybe maybe if maybe if, if like that first five minutes with like charlie sheen and Laura Dern and george clear on youtube or something watch that or or, 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 someone, or yeah or, or if someone like clipped together all of like john reese davies scenes because he's he's the only thing that has any sort of like crazy energy going on <laughs> this this like french canadian bear hunter but yeah everything else everything else is just so boring and terrible and sloppy Def, definitely not definitely nowhere near as good as like the original grizzly and Grizzly's rough. Yeah. Grizzly's has a fun beginning. Grizz, then, Grizzly's, Grizzly's already like a Jaws ripoff. But then this is like... Well, but okay, the saving grace of Grizzly 1 is that the Grizzly Bear becomes a like an, a crazy dark stalker force. Like it, it yeah. just suddenly becomes... A slasher villain. villain, yeah. Mm-hmm. A slasher villain, that's right. And we're just even surprised because it's it's clever. It's not just, oh, you fucked with the bear and it's there, you know? Like No, it, it like hides... It, Remember the one part it hid in a, under a waterfall somehow, like on its hind legs, and we're like, "How yep. did it do that?" And then, like, waited for like the one deputy to, like get undressed, and then then killed her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If if if, if Grizzly One is like Jaws, this is like Jaws the Revenge, but like not even that, <laughs> not even the same level as Jaws the Revenge, because it's like Jaws the Revenge is at least like crazy and ridiculous. And this is just boring and terrible. So definitely, yeah, definitely skip Grizzly Two. Don't get go, don't, don't get lured in by the, uh, you know, poster or the like like oh it's a lost movie that we found. And then the other thing I watched, which is way way better than Grizzly Two, is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem, which uh, you know obviously came out this weekend, uh, in theater this past weekend in theaters. I think it did okay. It was not. I still you know, dominated by Barbie still, but uh, I think as far as like Turtles openings, I think it was okay. And it it's a uh, really fun, fresh like take on Turtles. I, clearly, clearly inspired by Spider Verse, although it it has it definitely has a, a, its own unique style compared to Spider Verse, where it's like more of like a teenage sketchbook kind of look, where, like you know like like a you know 13 14 year old kid sketching in his book about and then like along with like skulls and like the 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 the, 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 the s symbol that everyone drew in the 90s like <laughs> it's a like sketch of these turtles but i mean it, it looks it looks great and it has like this really great uh kind of like ske- painterly it's, it looks like it's like, like painted sketches um and it all it all like it's like super well animated it looks it looks it looks fantastic and it's like the voice cast is, is all, across the board great. Like all the, the main like quartet that voices the turtles are all great because they're all like actually teenagers, and it's like they have like a really believable relationship and back and forth. And the turtles are all like really fleshed out characters. Like, they, like they're all like really different. They all have, like different interests and dreams and ideas. So they're like all like really like fully fleshed out characters. But like and like also like modernized like you know Donnie still does machines but he also like loves like Attack on Titan and BTS and stuff like that. So, and then Mikey wants to be like an improv comedian. Well, you're like exploring their characters then. Yeah, it's like it's great because like they still they still have the traits that you know and love from like all the way back to like the, the beginning of Turtles, but they put in like modern like more modern more and then. And then, and also like age appropriate, and they actually like feel like 
modern teenagers they're like using modern slang like they're like they're like saying people don't have riz or like people are sus and stuff like that Ooh, i'm not sure i like that it, it works it works am, am i am i now like the foot when i'm just like fuck these <laughs> teens yeah i mean it, it works it works to make them feel like actual teenagers that's true i mean it, it should but even really new teenagers now are like, they'd like to drop a lot of way more lingo instead of cool surfer vibes, because 80s teens just sort of said rad, and... And, I mean, the the slang wasn't as deep cut, you know? But I feel like now, when they're saying these things, it's like bad grammar like, completely. <laughs> you know, like, eh. Yeah. What's going on here? But, yeah, but they're all great, and then um, there's a whole thing... Where Splinter is trying is has been keeping them locked, kind of locked down in the in the, in the sewers because he had a he's he had a really terrible experience with humans when he was a rat and then when he got transformed he tried to cut like he tried to bring like them all out to like the outside world once and it was went terribly so he's like you can you can never go out there again <laughs> or like if you go out there hide in this version was he human no it, it's he, he was a rat, he was a normal rat and then so it's like it's, it's the rat version of Splinter. But it's also funny because he wasn't like a martial artist or had a martial art master. Like he just learned from like kind of like terrible like eighties karate videos. Oh. <laughs> so there's a whole there's a whole, whole hilarious montage of like how they trained. It's just they watched they got a bunch of like uh eighties and nineties like martial arts booklets and books and instructional videos, and that's how they learned that's how they learned martial arts. Uh um... It's funny. It's yeah. fun. It's funny. It, it's funny in the context of the movie. Like it's a really funny montage of like, it's yeah, it's especially all... when you think it's gonna be like a sacred school and all that. But I guess now that doesn't mean that the turtles and like the the and then the foot have like a relation because there's no foot in this one, right? No, n- not not in this movie. It's, so, it's wait, wait wait. Does that mean in the sequel, the Shredder also watched those shitty videos and had his own montage of learning karate? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's basically it's basically like Splinter had like watched Splinter and, and the, the turtles watched like Tiger Shulman videos to like learn karate, basically. No, I get it, I get it, but it, it's funny because then that means like so did Shredder if they have the same ideology of karate stuff of like the core basics. Well, you know, we don't really we, there's there's no indication in this movie about any relationship to the Foot or Shredder or anything. There's no. Like, uh, yeah, but it's, it'd be it's funny yeah. To tie in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the main villain is Superfly, who's voiced by Ice Cube, who is a house fly that got mutated by Baxter Stockman, became like this giant fly, and then he's and he's got the whole gang of like other mutants with him, who are all really funny and great. Like pa- Paul Rudd voices Mondo Gecko, and it's like it's like Paul Rudd seems like he's doing like a Pauly Shore impression. It's like, hey buddy, like what's up? I'm Mondo Gecko. <laughs> And then he and Mikey like instantly hit it off. And they're like, I love your vibe, man. And then like uh like Natasha Dimitrio from uh Wing New Shadows is basically Nadja playing Wingnut. That's cool. And then like Rose Byrne is leather leatherhead and she she's doing like an Australian accent for Leatherhead. Is Leatherhead a girl? Yeah. But like super like Australian, like crikey. <laughs> So yeah, all 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 that stuff's fun. All all the when they meet when they meet all the mutants, that's all fun. Just just overall, just like a super fun, like Turtles movie. It, de- it definitely nails like the like what you what do you want from like the characters and like the, like the style, but like definitely doing something new and interesting and fresh with it. And yeah, def- def- if you, it's the same guy directed Mitchell's versus Machines. So if you like that or you like Spider Verse, I mean you'll, you'll probably definitely like this. Um, soundtrack's also great. There's a lot of like '90s like hip hop in it. But also, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross did like a new score. The score is amazing. So yeah, I was like definitely, definitely if you're a Turtles fan, check it out uh, in theaters or uh, if you if you if you need to wait, check it out when it comes out on like streaming or something. But well worth checking out. It's, it's a really fun new take on Turtles. And then that's it for me this week. So we wrap things up. 
definitely head over to the site. We've got all of our usual features there. We got all the trailers we talked about. You can watch the French connection if you want. If you want to pay tribute to William Freaking, you can watch the French connection on, on every action. Uh, I've got a written review of Turtles. If you want to read a review of that, and all of our usual features and news and everything else is up there well, as well. Head over and check all that stuff out. And uh, yes, yeah, so for Chris, I am Zach, and we will see you next week. For more Everything Action, head to www.everythingaction.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at EVAction, on Facebook by searching for Everything Action, and follow us on Instagram at everything.action. You can also subscribe and get more episodes on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify.